Hello everyone, welcome to our first lecture series on the visionary classes. Myself Kalyan Biswal, I am doing PhD in School of Environmental Science, JNU. So before that, I would like to request you to subscribe our channel and contact us for the latest study material and regular classes in this number. Today I will teach you about the basic of environmental sciences. The first thing we should know about the environmental science is what is the environment. Environment is a French word that comes from the surrounding which means we what should we see around us or what encircles around us. Then what is environmental sciences? Okay. So, in environmental sciences, it is a multidisciplinary area of study where we will reading about the physical, chemical and biological components of the environment in focus to the current pollution and degradation of the environment. Okay. Now, the environmental science actually focus on the interactions of the following components of the surrounding. As we know, we have been looking around the soil, water, air and other organisms in, around us. So basically the interactions between these kinds of components of the surrounding is called as environmental sciences components. What are the now the spheres of the environment? Environment is consisting of the four types of spheres and it all the processes and interactions within the environment happens in these kind of four spheres. So the first sphere we are looking about the atmosphere. We can see it is mentioned that atmosphere is the gases that consume around the earth. Okay, then we come to the hydrosphere. It is all the water resources that are present in the our earth. Then we come to lithosphere. That is the solid earth above which all the life forms, all the trees and plants, leaf or all the soils are present in there. Now we come to biosphere. What is biosphere? All the organisms that are present around us that constitutes the biosphere. It means the biosphere is called as the life sphere. So moving on to the detailed explanation of the spheres, we first like to tell you about the atmosphere. The at you can see a figurative form of atmosphere here. So what is atmosphere? A atmosphere is a protective layer of the gas that surrounds the planet or the other materials in our solar system okay we should know that there is an atmosphere around the earth as well as around the jupiter as well as around the neptune as well as around the saturn we can see atmosphere there also so we can tell that earth has only the atmosphere around it okay so atmosphere of the earth actually what it does it protects the harmful sun rays that is ejected Okay, like ultraviolet rays for sustaining the life of the earth. What does it mean? That the ultraviolet rays coming from the sun, it will affect the organisms living on the earth. But due to the presence of a protective layer of the atmosphere, it reflects back or absorb it or transmit it throughout the atmosphere so that the life on the earth can sustain easily. So, the third point is telling that the atmosphere is constantly regulating the temperature of the earth. What does it mean? It prevents that too much cold or too much hot at, uh, uh, surrounding will not be there in uh, all around the earth. Okay. So, atmosphere is also acting as a regulator for the temperature on the earth. Atmosphere is also composed of the following gases like nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide and some amount of traces gas that are present in the atmosphere. So, what does it atmosphere does? It also affects the energy budget of the earth. What does it mean? The energy coming from the solar system is mainly affected by the energy atmosphere and its components. So, 
tells us that the energy budget what does me we know that budget is the what amount of energy we gain and what amount of energy we re release that is called as the energy budget of the earth so it also tells us about the energy budget of the earth okay so most of the cosmic rays coming from the outside space are being absorbed by the atmosphere which transmits uv visible near infrared and radio spectrum of the electromagnetic waves only so we can see that the earth only absorbs the cosmic rays while other rays that have uv visible and near infrared radio waves were being transferred through the electromagnetic waves so atmosphere has five distinct layers the first layer is called as the troposphere that lies below 6 to 20 kilometer we can see in the left hand side that is the climate sphere where all the climatic phenomena is occurring while the second sphere is the stratosphere that is stratified layer that means there is no mixing of the layers occurring in the stratosphere that is stratified layer the third layer is the mesosphere which is the coldest sphere of the earth so this is the coldest sphere of the atmosphere in the earth so this region is also called as the meteors region where the meteor showers usually occur so in the fourth sphere is called as the thermosphere which has high temperature around it while the fifth sphere is the exosphere that is the outermosphere and the thinner sphere outside the atmosphere now moving on to the second sphere that is the hydrosphere hydrosphere comprises of all the water spheres such as oceans seas lakes rivers streams reservoir polar ice cap glaciers and groundwater out of nine, total 97 percent of the earth earth only two percent is a fresh water that is the major concern for the current scientist how should they will protect the fresh water and make it available for the human use and other uses okay so out of that 2% of the fresh water only 1% is available as for the human use such as surface water in the form of river lake or ground water it is available for the human so you can see from the figure that 97.2% of the ocean consists of the hydrosphere while 2.8% consists by the ice seeds and groundwater out of which ice seeds cover approximately 2.15 percent out of which the fresh water is very little it consists of the saline lake inland areas streams water while atmospheric vapor in the atmosphere and as a soil water moisture so you can see how much fresh water is only available for the human use so we need to be concerned about the hydrosphere before polluting it now the third sphere that we are reading here the rigid outermost part of the earth it consists of the crust as well as the upper mental part of our interior of earth okay so here you can see the lithosphere can also consist of that uh, continental crust and the oceanic crust so both the crust are called as the part of our lithosphere so continental crust and oceanic crust are a part of lithosphere it consists of the minerals occurring in the earth crust and the soil all the minerals organic matter air and water that lies on the surface of earth are the part of our lithosphere so we can see from the diagram that this much portion is consisting of our lithosphere okay now to the last sphere we are seeing that the total community of living organism and their interaction with all other spheres of the earth is called as biosphere so we can consider that aquatic life forms as well as terrestrial life forms as well as the life forms that are roaming in the atmosphere are a part of our biosphere so this we can see that all these organisms are interacting with their different different ecosystems that are present in the environment and constitutes the biosphere so i am thanking you from here have a nice day